Euro 2020 is finally upon us, a year later than planned, but of course that could not be helped. I've got to admit, when a big international tournament comes around, I'm like a little kid again. I've got my sticker album, I'm walking around with my 442 Euro 2020 guide everywhere I go at the moment as I'm trying uh, to get into the tournament fever. I said I'm trying because the way last season was, it made me a little bit fed up of football. I'm sure a lot of you uh, felt the same way as well. But fast forward to now, and with just a few days until the big kickoff, I'm really, really buzzing. I'm really, really excited for it. I have to be honest. And this is our first bit of content solely focused on this summer's European Championship. So let me know along the way, what you liked, what you didn't like. This is the first time we're covering something non-Arsenal right here on the podcast. We've dabbled in some Premier League talk previously and we've done a bit of Serie A too, but we are going to be bringing you full coverage of the European Champions Championships. Blah, lost my words. Throughout the course of this next month or so with daily shows and I look forward to taking you all through it. So on this first bit of content, we are going to be giving you my predictions for the group stage of this summer's European Championship. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to have a look at how that goes at the end of the group stage. We're going to look back on it. We're going to see what we got wrong, what we got right. And uh, of course, feel free in the comment sections to let me know with which of my predictions you agree and with which you disagree. Always love to hear from you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's kick off by looking at Group A. Now, Group A contains Turkey, Italy, Wales, and Switzerland. And the team that immediately jumps out to me are Italy. Of course, Italy um, failed to qualify for the last World Cup, and that was described as a national disaster. And when you're a nation of Italy's pedigree, when it comes to football, then of course you can understand why it was met in that way and why so many in Italy were really frustrated uh, with that outcome. Fast forward to now and Roberto Mancini has transformed this Italian side and in my opinion has a really good blend between youth and experience and I'm expecting Italy to be the dark horses in this competition. Expectation levels for the Italians have always been incredibly high when it comes to international tournaments but this time around given what happened when they failed to make the last World Cup I think those expectations have been tempered a little bit and as a result I think they could be the dark horses here so for me Italy top group A and then you've got Wales, Switzerland and Turkey all sides capable on their day of producing really really positive results I look at the Swiss and I'd say you know in years gone by they've always been built up and not really done a great deal uh, I look at the Welsh and I feel like you know they had their time in you know the last time they were kind of on this stage and I look at them now and I go yeah well you know you've you've got Gareth Bale you've got Aaron Ramsey but they don't look as strong overall to me I know there are a few sort of younger talents that are being kind of uh, highly spoken of at the moment but I don't see Wales finishing in the top two who I do see scraping into the top two and another team that many will describe probably going into the tournament as a potential surprise package are the Turks. I think Turkey uh, could end up finishing second in this group. They've got a really, really good squad. They've got a really good coach in Senal Gunes. And of course, they've got Yilmaz up top, who simply cannot stop scoring at the moment. Always very passionate, always very hardworking, the Turks. So I fancy Turkey to scrape through Group A in second place. Of course, there will be four third place teams that also will make way to the um, to the knockout stages but for now we're going to do it this way so we're going to do group a as follows italy turkey wales and i'm actually going to put switzerland at the bottom of the pile they do a flop moving into group b which contains denmark finland belgium and russia i think this group is pretty simple i think belgium are by far the strongest squad in this uh, competition, Roberto Martinez has been there a while now. He's had time to get his ideas and thoughts across. And I think that everybody will be pretty clear about what their jobs are going into this competition. The likes of Kevin De Bruyne are game changers. And so for me, Belgium will be top of Group B. And in second place, I'm going to go with the Danes, another side who people have high hopes for outside of the traditional nations that you'd associate with being real contenders so i'm going to go with group b i'm going to go belgium denmark russia and unfortunately finland in fourth moving on to group c well you'd think on paper that the dutch would have a bit of a 
uh, a cruise here and you'd expect the Dutch in years gone by to have topped this group and with ease. But when you look at that Dutch squad, it isn't exactly inspiring. I've heard them being described lately as a really good team rather than previously when they were uh, not such a good team but with bags of, of, of individual talent. I'm not sure they're going to top this group though. I look at Ukraine who were incredibly impressive during the qualification uh, for this tournament. Have Andrei Shevchenko at the helm and of course only conceded four goals on their way to the tournament. So I'm actually going to go for a bit of a surprise here and I'm going to stick the Ukraine in top and I'm going to put the Netherlands in second with Austria in third and North Macedonia in fourth. I think North Macedonia, as great as it is that they got to the tournament, and I'm chuffed for Goran Pandev, I really am, but I think North Macedonia will probably lose every game in this tournament. Moving on to Group D, and that's the big one, that's the group containing England. It also contains Croatia, Scotland, and the Czech Republic. Anything other than a group win here for England will be frowned upon, there's no doubt about that. They've got a really, really talented group. Uh, Gareth Southgate took them all the way to the World Cup semi-finals in the last major tournament, and that has obviously raised the levels of expectation. Lots of question marks about Gareth Southgate's side. Who does he play in the centre of midfield? Is Jordan Henderson going to be fit enough? Who plays in that front kind of uh, those two positions either side of Harry Kane? There is lots and lots for Gareth Southgate to think about over the course of the next few days ahead of their opener against Croatia. So I'm going to put England at the top of the group though because I do think that they are by far and away better than any of the other sides in this group. Croatia, of course, World Cup finalists when the last World Cup took place, but of course, a lot of those players who were really at their peak at that point have probably just gone over the hill a little bit in terms of their careers. And you look at the likes of Luka Modric, fantastic footballer and, and various others as well, but I just feel like it's a little bit too late in the cycle for this Croatia squad. However, having said that, I expect them to progress through the group in second place behind England. I'm going to put Scotland in third because I think the passion, the fight, the desire will get them over the line. I actually like Steve Clark as a manager. Scotland will be well up for this having not been in an international tournament for so long. I think they'll finish third with probably enough points to scrape through to the round of 16. Uh, but Czech Republic, unfortunately for me, are going to be bottom of the pile. Moving on to Group E, Spain, Sweden, Poland, Slovakia. Well, Spain's whole tournament is, is up in the air at the moment because Spain have registered some COVID cases. And what does that mean going forward? Have other players contracted it? At the time of recording this video, we don't know what an impact that's going to have on the Spain squad. But even still, even if they are forced to draft in players, I still think they stand a very good chance of getting through this group. The Swedes... I'm not sure about the Swedes, you know, I've looked at them in years gone by and they're a team I normally have quite good hopes for and they never really deliver, do they? Uh, normally get to the knockout stages and then, what, well, the first knockout stage and they never really progress beyond that. So I'm not massively big on the Swedes. I think had Zlatan been going to the tournament, they would have had that bit of X factor that Zlatan brings to the table and perhaps that would have seen them. Uh, be a little bit more competitive. Poland, for me, uh, look a decent side as well. Of course, world-class talent in Robert Lewandowski leading the line, and he's got some pretty handy players around him as well. I'd imagine that Poland will probably get through this group. If Spain are okay to continue, and if Spain do have the squad that was initially picked going into the tournament, or at least most of that squad, then I expect Spain to go through too. So I think Sweden and Slovakia, unfortunately, miss out. Uh, from progression in Group E. But again, remember, the third place side have a chance of progressing if, of course, um, they get a better points tally than at least two of the other third place sides in the competition. So my Group E roundup would be as follows, providing there is no major problem with Spain. I expect them to win it. I've got Poland in second, Sweden in third, and Slovakia in fourth. Now moving on to the final group, Group F, which is the group of death in many ways, uh, includes Hungary, Portugal, France and Germany. Now of course lots of people are talking about how strong the French are and I agree, you know they've got an incredible squad, they could probably name two sides capable of beating most. So I really do fancy the French to go all the way in the tournament, as most people do. There's a reason they're the favourites. But I also think the Portuguese have a very good group as well. And of course, they are the holders of the competition. And with Cristiano Ronaldo in your side, you always have a chance. 
The Germans, however, they're on a bit of a decline, if we're being completely honest. You look at that squad, it doesn't really scare you, but they are still the Germans. They still have that efficiency and that ability to grind out results. And I wouldn't write Germany off of sneaking through this group. At whose expense? I'm not sure. But I think Germany stand a chance. And because of the fact that they should probably beat Hungary and that will at least put them on three points. They too stand a very good chance of progressing as the third place side. But if I had to go out on a limb and give my prediction for this group in order, I am going France top, Portugal second, Germany third and Hungary down in fourth. So those are my predictions for the Euro 2020 group stage. Let me know yours in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you hit the like button and tune into our Euros content throughout this summer competition. Really looking forward to it. Um, looking forward to sitting outside, enjoying the weather, watching the tournament. Three games of football a day in the group stage. What more could you want? Uh, don't forget, hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Don't forget our Arsenal coverage is not stopping. This is in addition to that. So stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe and help us get towards that. Uh, next milestone that we're so desperate to reach and of course if you're listening via the audio uh, don't forget to leave us a review i'll catch you all very very soon uh, with some more euro 2020 comment but those are my group stage predictions cheers